The M50, one of Canon's most popular consumer cameras for both photography and video. This tiny little crop sensor mirrorless camera first came out back in the spring of 2018, which at the time of this video makes the M50 somewhere around two and a half years old. Now, despite that fact, the M50 is actually anything but an old camera. And I say that because if you go and if you do research on Google, there are more people searching for information about the M50 today than at any point before. So what I decided to do, because the M50 remains even two and a half years later, still a very popular camera, is give you just a complete overview of shooting video using the Canon M50. And I'm gonna divide this up into four videos. Yes, four videos. Sorry if you're not interested in the M50, but it's such a big topic that I feel like it's something that needs to be covered in detail across a series of videos. So part one is the one that you're looking at right now. In this video, I'm going to unbox a brand new M50. I'm gonna go through all the settings. I'm gonna show you the ones that you should uh, be changing the things that you need to do in order to get the M50 into the right spot to be recording video. Then in part two of this video, I'm going to talk about lenses. And then in part three, I'm going to explain how to customize the picture styles on the M50. Then part four is going to be all about 4K. My name is Todd Domini. I make videos here on YouTube about... <clears throat> My name is Todd Domini. I make videos here on YouTube about photography. My God, I'm going a little bit hoarse, it seems. Let's unbox the M50. Let's uh, set this camera up for recording video. Now, this should be rather interesting for me because, I mean, I haven't, you know, I've been using an M50 for, um, you know, about two years now, and I haven't seen a new one in a while. Uh, of course, the standard, you know, multi-language instruction book, which no one ever looks at. Power cable, you know, oh God. Yeah. Now this, now I know what's in here. I just, I mean, really, I can't stand these things. I mean, this is the, the battery charger that Canon includes with all their cameras. Charging over USB has never been something that Canon's been particularly excited about with their consumer cameras. I don't get it, I don't understand why. Okay, so, yep, strap that you never use. Uh, battery here and uh, maybe it'll have a charge on it. And of course, then we have the M50. All right, so let's get this thing out. Yep, it's an M50. It's funny how much it, like a camera loosens up over time. Like the rear screen, actually the, the, you know, the hinge on it is tight. Nice little camera, still love these little M50s. Okay, without further ado, let's set up a brand new Canon M50 for the purposes of recording video. Now, when you power on the M50 for the first time and you press this menu button on the back of the camera, you are going to see a display that looks like this. This is a simplified user interface that Canon developed for the M50 and some of their other consumer cameras. We can't use this interface, so we need to turn it off. So what you need to do is either tap on OK or just press the set button on the back of the camera and then come up here to menu display and change this from guided to standard. Then press the menu button on the back of the camera again and now you are in the standard M50 menu. Uh, next thing I recommend uh, disabling is the mode guide. This just tells you what aperture priority, shutter priority is. If you already know what those things are, you don't need it. So just set that to disable. Next, come down to feature guide. Chances are you're not going to need this either. So set feature guide to disable. The next step, if you haven't done so already, is to put the mode dial up here on the top of the camera into video mode. This is indicated by the little white camera icon. Okay, now that we're in video mode, let's go back to the menu and start editing some settings. And I want you to go all the way to the very first menu option, which is this red camera at the far left. Now, the very first setting to edit is shooting mode. By default, this is set to movie auto exposure. What this means is that the M50 will then, well, while you are recording video, make changes to aperture and shutter speed. And that may sound nice and that may sound helpful, but it can cause rather unpredictable results and uh, it could completely change the look of your footage. So instead of using movie auto exposure, select the next option down, which is movie manual exposure. With movie manual exposure, you then have control over aperture, shutter, and ISO while you are uh, recording video. 
Next option is movie record quality. On the M50, there are five resolution options available. The default one that the M50 uses is full HD 1080 at 30 frames per second. Now, your instinct may be when you first come into this menu to come up here and select 4K because that's one of the selling points of the camera. The M50 can technically shoot 4K. However, and I hate to break this to you if you're just now finding out about this, the 4K mode on the M50 is rather limited. No dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Dual pixel autofocus only available in the HD 1080 modes. The other limitation of 4K is the fact that video is cropped. And when I say cropped, I mean it is severely cropped. There are, however, some ways to get around the crop, which I will talk more about in part four of this video. So which resolution is best? Well, the one that I would recommend using is the full HD at 23.98p, otherwise known as 24 frames per second. Or if you live in a PAL region, you would select the 25p option. 24, 25 frames per second are the natural frame rates which have been uh, used in you know motion pictures and television shows. It's been around forever. You will get results out of this mode that look a little closer to what your eyes are accustomed to, and it will make the M50 look a a little less like your like your mom and dad's camcorder or one of those later Peter Jackson movies that uh, that people don't like to talk about. I now want you to move over to screen number three and the very first option here is white balance. I would recommend changing this from auto white balance to daylight. By setting it to a fixed value like daylight at 5200 Kelvin, then all of your footage, the white balance of all of it is going to look the same. And additionally, 5200 Kelvin is as close as you can get to, uh, to being color neutral, to being the most natural looking light. In summary, avoid auto white balance, set your white balance to something consistent and if you're not sure which one is appropriate, just set it to daylight and you should be good. The next setting at the bottom of screen number three is another very important one, and this one is picture style. The picture style that the M50 uses by default is auto, which if you've been following along in this video by now, you will know that is never a good idea to let the M50 automatically do anything. So what I would recommend doing for people who are just shooting general purpose video, for the majority of people who are creating video footage using the M50, instead of setting this to auto, set this to standard. It has good color, good color saturation. Uh, the contrast is where you want it to be. If, however, you are shooting video with the intent of color grading that footage later using uh, Premiere, Final Cut, DaVinci, uh, standard is not the option that you want to use. Instead, you will want to create custom picture styles for the M50 to get footage which is more malleable, which is uh, better for editing in post. That is a topic unto itself, a slightly more advanced topic, and that is the one that I'm going to be covering in depth in part three of this video series. Okay, now let's jump over to screen number four, and the second setting down is AF method, otherwise known as autofocus method. The default setting here of autofocus with face tracking is the one that you typically want to keep, because then when you're doing vlogging work like this, it's able to find your face and adjust its autofocus as need be. Now let's jump over to screen number five, and the second setting down on the screen that you will see is MF peaking settings. MF stands for manual focus. I highly recommend changing peaking on this screen from off to on. The reason focus peaking is so awesome is because it makes manual focusing so much easier when you are recording video. What I like to do is turn the flip screen here, just turn it horizontal like this so that I can hold it down and look straight down into the screen, turn on manual focusing, and then I'm able to, with one hand here, just turn the focus ring on the front of the lens and I can watch the preview image here on the back of the camera and the M50 will highlight in red the areas of the shot which are in focus and, uh, and the areas which are not highlighted are then not in focus. Super helpful. Okay, the next setting is one down from focus peaking and it's called IS settings. IS stands for image stabilization. Digital image stabilization is enabled by default, but you will notice when you go into the submenu here that there is an additional option for enhanced. Now, enhanced sounds great in theory, but in truth, it's anything but. It's basically a very aggressive form of digital 
image stabilization where when you're filming yourself, the corners and the edges of your shot will get really warpy and just kind of weird because the, the software is being super aggressive. Avoid uh, enhanced unless you absolutely need to use it. If however, you plan to use the Canon M50 on a gimbal or on a tripod, or if you just want that natural kind of bounce and ebb and flow, in your footage, you know, to get kind of like a nice handheld looking shot, I would recommend disabling digital image stabilization because you don't need it. Okay, the next setting is button function, which is down here at the bottom of the same screen on screen number five. And when you come into here, you will see options for half press and fully press. This controls the behavior of the shutter button, the large shutter button here on the top of the camera. What I would recommend doing is coming down here to fully press and instead of using no function, which means that nothing happens when you are in video mode, uh, change this instead to start, stop movie recording. And what this does is that then, instead of always trying to find this tiny little recessed uh, record button here on the top of the camera, you can now, when you are in video mode, just use the shutter button uh, that you use, you know, just when taking pictures and everything else, this now functions as a record start and stop button. Okay, we have reached the final setting. To edit this one, move over to the wrench icon, which is the setup uh, screen on the M50. Move over to screen number five, and at the very top, you should see an option for custom functions. Now, what we're going to do here is change the behavior of some of the buttons on the M50 so that they are more useful when recording video than they are by default. The settings that we're going to change are on screen number five. There are five subscreens within custom functions, and you basically just use the left and right uh, arrow uh, buttons here on the back of the M50 to move back and forth within these screens. To change these settings, you then just press the set button here on the back of the camera, and then you will see this pretty cool interface here where you can tab around and the illustration on the left side of the screen will show you where each one of these buttons is located on the on the body. There are two uh, buttons here that I've changed and I've left the rest of them at their default value. The first of which is the flash button. To come in here to the menu of options and you'll see when you look around it here, I mean, there are quite a few. The one that which works best for me is peak. And what this does is that this enables and disables the focus peaking mode that I was talking about earlier. So if you decide that you wanna do, if you wanna shoot some B-roll and you wanna do some manual focusing, it's really simple to do because you can just press the AF, MF button here on the left side of the wheel that will turn on uh, manual focus mode. And then you press the right side to enable or disable focus peaking. Set the flash button to peak or whatever works for you, then come back out to the main menu and the next button down you will see is the erase button. So the function that I think works better for the erase button is to set this to the display off option. The reason this is helpful is because the screen on the back of the M50, it consumes power. So by having it on all the time, it will drain the battery on the camera and thus shorten the amount of time that you're able to shoot. And with that, your new M50 is all set up, ready to go, and it's optimized for recording video. Before wrapping this video up, there's one additional usability tip that I wanna give you when using the M50 uh, to record video. And I need to attach a lens really quick in order to do this. So when you are shooting video with the M50, you can control shutter speed with this uh, dial here on the front of the camera. You wanna move this down to 1 50th of a second when you are shooting at 24 frames per second. Now, I know from experience that this wheel here on the front of the M50 is super loose. I mean, it takes very little effort just to bump this thing and change your shutter speed as you are recording video, which could completely ruin your footage. There's an exposure switch button here on the top. It's like the top arrow here on the back of the camera. And what this does is if you push up on this, it changes the function of the wheel here on the front of the camera from shutter speed to aperture, which is far more useful when recording video because then you can just turn this dial back and forth and you can open and close your aperture as need be and your shutter is fixed at 1 50th of a second and you're not going to get into any trouble. The only downside though with the M50 is that as soon as you turn the camera off and then turn it back on again, the function of this wheel reverts back to shutter speed. So generally what I do, I've just gotten in the habit but if every time I turn on the camera and put it in video mode, I push up here on the back of the camera to change the behavior of this wheel to the aperture setting so that I don't accidentally screw up my shutter speed. 
So coming up in part two of this video, I'm going to talk about lenses, which lenses are best for recording video on the M50. Then in part three, I'm going to talk about customizing picture styles to get even better image quality out of this camera. And then finally in part four, I'm going to talk about 4K, how you can modify the M50 to actually get usable 4K footage. That's it, everyone. If you enjoyed this video and if you wanna see the additional parts that are coming up and be notified when they are released, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification icon as well if you would uh, like to be notified. If you learned something from this video, if you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you next time.